Hi, I'm Kara. And I'm Adam. Welcome back to Crunchy Cozy Games. Last week, we talked to you a little bit about our guide to crowdfunding. And so today, we wanted to give you a personal look into some of our crowdfunded games to show you some of our favorites that we've collected throughout the years. Yeah. I guess I'll kick us off. Yeah, why don't we just jump right into it? Yeah. So one of the earliest games that I backed on Kickstarter was um, by this the publisher of this one. Um, so this is Light in the Mist. Mm -hmm. Um, the first game I backed by them was actually called The Emerald Flame. It was a little bit earlier. Bigger um, box. Bigger too. box. We don't actually have the box anymore because we um, passed it on to some friends of ours. It's kind of a single playthrough game. You're mm -hmm. solving some puzzles. But that is what this publisher is known for. Yeah, it's like an escape room in a box. Mm -hmm. um, so this is by Post Curious. Um, and we are still working our way through this um, tarot puzzle, mm -hmm. um, which is very fun and very easy to just kind of pick up and come back to. But I have found that uh, their Kickstarters are very smooth. Mm -hmm. And I just really love um, one fun thing that they do is that if you follow them on social media, they do puzzles throughout the campaign. Right. I they, love that. Like little extras and you can get bonuses for completing the puzzles. Um, and it's just really a joy to see what they come up with and what artists they collaborate with um, for the design. Uh, it's just, I, I really enjoy <laughs> Post Curious, and so Light in the Mist is one of my favorites. Well, I'm gonna start off with one of our biggest boxes because it's been in the shot the whole time, and I think we had it in the shot last week as well. Mm -hmm. And that is the Castles of Burgundy Special Edition. Right. Uh, so this, Castles of Burgundy was a game that neither one of us had played before mm -hmm. we got the Special Edition. So it was kind of a, a risk on my part to back. But I'd heard so many good things from reliable people that I trusted about Castles of Burgundy. And based on the gameplay style, I knew it was something that we would like. And so I figured, well, we might as well get the edition that has everything. Because what's interesting about this one, and one of the reasons I like it so much, is not because of the overproduced castles, although <laughs> they're very neat. They're very cool. Very unnecessary, but, but very cool. The thing I love about it is just this screams quality from the top to bottom. I mean, everything from the different player mats that you get, all the different duchy boards, and then the fact that you can kind of just slot them into the dual layered player boards that you get just makes for a very smooth experience. Mm -hmm. I know that we've had problems in the past with tile laying games yes. where one of our cats will jump up on the table, move everything all around, and then it's sort of like, I guess the game just ends now it because I don't remember where everything went. Yep, yeah, we had a cat jump on a scoreboard one time. Oh, gosh. And it's just like, we were probably three quarters of the way through the game and it just was so devastating. <laughs> now, this is one that I will say, you know, we, we talk a lot about with crowdfunded games, them being overproduced. Like this, if you hold the rule book here for just a second, this is kind of like that. Oh, it's like that linen, linen, finish. linen finish for the rule book, which is definitely overkill, but it's very, very nice. It's nice. Uh, and of course, it's all topped by the fact that this game is just one of the best. Uh, I know it is currently back on Game Found right now because they're doing a second printing of this one. Uh, because as far as I can tell, this one has really held its value. Mm -hmm. But it is one of our favorites, not just the game, but also the production of it. And the other thing that's really nice about this one is it comes with all the expansions, uh, as well as the brand new Vineyards expansion, mm -hmm. which you can only get through this special edition. Yeah. So yeah, that is the Castles of Burgundy. Uh, next up, these have kind of been, I don't, are they kind of in the shot? I don't know. Um, I'm going to talk about one that we have mentioned before several times on this channel, and that is Fit to Print. Yeah. Um, it's just a delightful experience to play this game. It's frantic. Yep. It's hectic. <laughs> it is a, a brain melter, like mind bending puzzle oh, once sure. you get all your pieces together. But it plays so quickly, mm -hmm. and it is. It, you know, if you take the extra time, um, since you're saving so much time in gameplay, <laughs> to read through all the little headlines and all of the pictures yeah. and the ad, like, uh, it's just so fun. Um, I really enjoy Fit to Print. Well, and as we'll talk about, I mean, AEG and Flat Out Games, they know how to run they a really great do. crowdfunding campaign. I mean, they do one just about every year. And this edition, I mean, doesn't really come with any extras or any bells and whistles to right. it. 
their thing is that most of the time when they launch a game, it's $29. So $29 plus your shipping and they're gonna send you the game and you're one of the first to receive it. We've loved every single puzzle game that they put out and it's, you'll see in a minute. And so yes. that's just always a great deal for us. Yeah, good to print. Okay, I'm gonna talk about one of our smallest box games and this one is becoming one of my favorite publishers and that's All Play. Uh, this little two player game is called Sail it's a two-player trip-taking game, and it actually came in a pack of four games about this size. And I love these little small boxes. Oh yeah, they're perfect. They're great for filling space in our calyx when we have games that just don't quite fill mm -hmm. everything. Um, but Sail is a really fun little two-player trip-taking game. You're basically moving this ship around, and you sit on the opposite end of the table from whoever you're playing with when they win a trick. The ship moves towards them. When you win a trick, the ship moves towards you. And you're avoiding sea monsters mm -hmm. and it, it, other pitfalls. Right. Try not to drown in a whirlpool or hit rocks. And then, of course, you've also got to manage your cards. Uh, and then, of course, the big catch is that you can't communicate with right. one another. Right. You're not talking about what those are. Uh, much like, you know, doing a real pirate ship, you can't talk. That's how I imagine it was. Sure. <laughs> Me matey. <laughs> Silent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pirates known for their silence. Kinda. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, but I think this is another publisher that I just really enjoy how they do crowdfunding because when they typically do these kind of small boxes, there's usually like four to a pack. You can back just one. Typically, they're around anywhere between 10 to $20 for them. And then you get this nice box of just little stacks of cubes of the games. They do larger games as well, but I mean, uh, this one I always really like because of their pledge manager. Yeah. Uh, All Play is one of those publishers that when you get into their pledge manager, they just give you a catalog of games and then they say, hey, go crazy. Yes. Order all of them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice little game. Love the pack that they came in. That's Sale. Uh, next up, a f another familiar title to us and also by AEG and Flatout and this is Verdant. Yeah. The fact that we have two games from the same publisher in this, uh, I mean we this is one that we will back Yeah. whenever they put something out we're like, if the game looks good to us, we're like, yeah. I mean, in fact, I got a shipping <laughs> notification just last week that said Nocturne is on its way to us. That's AEG's next game. Yeah. So we, we love Verdant. Um, we did a video all about specifically these flat out games. So yep. if you haven't looked at that one and seen um, what we think about these in depth, you should go check that video out. I just realized that now with Nocturne imminent, we're gonna have to just completely scrap that video and redo the do ranking. The, do the whole thing. Well, I guess we gotta play some, I think we need to revisit all of them, right? Yep. So we just need to play some, yep. play some games. See you guys again in another two months. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so that's Verdant. <laughs> cool. Um, well. Uh, one that I was just hankering for was Wonderland's War, and this is another big box game. I mean, I don't know if the camera's going to pick up just how wide this is. It's big. But this is one that, first of all, I was really excited to back because I've never seen it out in the wild. It's never been at our friendly mm -hmm. local game store, and they carry quite a bit of games. They do. They have a good variety. Uh, I saw it one time on Amazon, but it was just the regular edition. Right. And the difference between this edition and the, the regular retail is that there's minis for all of the different Wonderlandians that you can control, as well as all the different characters that you play as. Right. And otherwise, it's cardboard standees, which, mm -hmm. is, which is still wonderful. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Totally great. Um, you know, there's some other advantages, like this came with the Shards of Ma Madness expansion, which is pretty cool. It basically yeah. just adds more cards. But at its core, this is a bag building game where, mixed with some area control. So all the fighting is done by drawing chips from your bag. If you draw madness shards, then you're gonna bust and lose all of your support in that area. And I just, I love, you know, those things combined with such a fun theme. I do, I think that the, the Alice in Wonderland world is just so captivating right. as, as a game 
realm. It's well, so cool. And thinking about the art and the art style for this, it's just incredibly breathtaking. I, I mean, you whenever you're drawing a card, you're just curious to see what's on there. I love all the different Wonderlandians. Mm -hmm. If I had a steady hand to paint, this would be the minis that I would want to paint. Sure, of course. Uh, the other thing that I really like that came included with this edition is that they have little colored bases for all of the different gray miniatures. Oh, so good. Uh, it's great because every player's color is very vibrant and you can tell who's who just by those. But the miniatures themselves are gray. So because you can draft different people to your, your side, your team, those little bases clip onto the bottom of them so it's really easy to tell who's yes. in control of which area yes. and that's definitely crucial yeah but i absolutely love wonderland's war if you can find the special edition i think it is very worth it next up we have one uh that you can't find it unless yeah. you backed it unfortunately well, so this is a this is one that I know was this very disappointing for like right, uh, and I know this one was disappointing for a lot of people because uh, Holy Grail Games, the company that made it, uh, they they went out of business. Uh, so there are probably people out there that never got their copy of the game because unfortunately they got stuck in fulfillment and they couldn't pay off the contract to get it shipped out. So yeah. those games are stuck and. That's sort of the danger of crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. We were lucky enough, I, and I don't know how it was possible that the games got through to us. Yeah. And so, I mean, honestly, the best thing, the best aspect of us crowdfunding this game is that we actually got it. Right. And but, I, because there's not there's not another way to get it now. Right. I, 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 I don't mean, know unless if it's you, for unless sale. It's, right. Unless you're like I said, you can usually buy things secondhand or reselling. Right. But um, getting it directly from the the crowdfunding campaign i mean that's the only way you can get it yeah and you know there's not a lot of bells and whistles to this one i mean mm -hmm. it was a pretty tight campaign uh they did fund but it didn't like set any records or milestones or anything like that uh overall this is just a really unique game and it's hard it to is. kind of describe because you're collecting sets and then you're also publishing your works that have to do with either the venue or the species that you're researching yeah uh, but it is a heavy. It, it's no, heavy. It's, it's it's a heavy Euro game mm -hmm. uh, that just has kind of a unique theme, and I just really enjoy the art in this one as well. Yeah, it. I remember really, really liking it um, when we have played it. Um, but yeah, it was. We we were really lucky that we have this game. Right, <laughs> and I mean, just lo and behold, it's also one of our favorites, or at least one of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Encyclopedia. Yeah. So here's one uh, that I think you ended up liking a little bit more than me, but I will admit that this is one of the coolest deluxe editions that we have, and that's Septima. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a this is a table hog of a game. It uh, sure is. Oh man. There are multiple boards. You're tracking, you know, how powerful your potions are. You're also moving your witches around the map. But then on top of that, you also have a very large player board yourself. Um, the really cool thing about this game that you can only get with this special edition, it doesn't come with the retail edition, is it's got a customized storage solution. Mm. So it's got like a three-layered storage solution that all your pieces sure. fit neatly into. And the thing that I love the most about it is for all your different resources, there are little tubs for those that you can just literally pull out, set that on the table, Ugh. and it's good to go. I love those. And for a big, heavy game like this that has a lot going on, that's going to take a little bit to teach, being able to get it to the table that much faster is critical. Well, and you know, we all are familiar with the tiny bags mm -hmm. of components. Yep. And I really, really love being able to just bypass that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing against, nothing against baggies because they are a, a viable solution. But when you have so many different pieces that you're doing, uh, it also saves space on a table. Right. When it's already taking up a lot of space because those piles of things tend to spread. Right. So if you can contain those. Well, and one of the hardest things, especially with retail boxes, is that they've crammed everything into it so tightly mm -hmm. that when you get like a deck box to put all your cards in or a game tray to put all your pieces in. It might not fit in the box. might not fit. And that is one of my biggest board game pet peeves is when stuff just doesn't fit. 
yeah. I like to have just one box for everything and that's why this is such a great deluxe edition because it makes it so easy to table mm -hmm. and I mean for what is a very fun game overcoming that hurdle early on is fantastic absolutely so yeah that's Septima um, and then I think this little lineup is going to be very familiar. <laughs> um, my favorite crowdfunding game of all time is Flamecraft. And it's um, delightful. It is. I will say one other thing, um, maybe that we didn't mention last week, that maybe is another tip. If there is a Facebook group for the game that you're, that you're crowdfunding, you should join it. Um, a lot of times the developers are going to be in that group and interacting and talking, and you never know what you're going to learn about it. Um, I, uh, there the Flamecraft Facebook group we are still members of, and it's it's wonderful. Um, it's just kind of a, a fun space. We get to see everybody that paints all of their minis. That's <laughs> a big thing with this. Um, but for this game specifically, for Flamecraft, um, we have the deluxe edition, mm -hmm. and that came with minis of the dragons, right. and then wooden resources, and mm -hmm. then also metal coins. Right, and the neoprene mat, right? The neoprene mat. Um, is so nice. Um, and so all of those pieces together, we also um, completed, uh, I don't remember, there was something that we had to do and we got the, the pink fancy dragon oh, yeah. as an add-on. So there's a, a seventh color um, <laughs> that you were able to add. Uh, there's also some promotional uh, venues, like different yes. shops that you can go into that yeah. are Kickstarter exclusive. Mm -hmm. And some of those just mix up the gameplay a little bit. So they don't yes. change anything critically, but instead of getting resources, you might gr get a special power. Right. Uh, which is kind of a, a unique little twist. Yeah. The really cool thing about this is, of course, I mean, if you've watched our channel, you know we love Flamecraft. This game really blew up when it hit retail. It did. And it's everywhere now. I see it all over the place. Right, but it's not the special edition. It's exactly. The one with the wooden dragons. Mm -hmm. And this this special edition started going for quite a bit of money because people wanted the plastic dragons. It's true. Well, and they've since done um, a second run of mm -hmm. dragons, but they are different dragons. Right. So they have done, done different ones from the box. They do usually base it off of one of the, one of the ones that you can get on a card. Right. Um, and so it's a different set of, of seven, I believe. You just order all seven at once. And they also did a new run of the, the wooden resources, but they're big. Oh, cool. So it, you know, they have, it, they're still, they've tried to keep the, the special nature of like the first run backers getting their deluxe pieces. I think that's Which I think cool. is so fun. <laughs> Not to mention all the plushies, which I think are oh, adorable. They're so cute. I'm really hoping that they do the last two dragons. Yeah, Cardboard Alchemy, if you're listening, we will absolutely go ahead and order those. So uh, <laughs> make it happen. Uh, all right, last but not least, uh, one of the earliest games that we crowdfunded and also one of our personal favorites mm -hmm. is this bad boy here, Blood on the Clock Tower. Uh, again, if you've watched our top 100, you know that Kara and I both we share a lot of love game. for social deduction games, but very specifically Blood on the Clock Tower. It is like a reality show in a box. And I know the biggest thing about this game is, uh, I'm trying to remember what year it arrived. I think we got it in 2022. Uh, and it had, I, I think I backed it initially. It was either 2019 or 2020. It so was it, it was pre-COVID. Yeah. Okay, so it must have been 2019 then. But it took a long time to get here. Uh, you could play a little bit online through their Discord servers and all that kind of stuff. But... You know, the meat and the potatoes of this game is getting your friends around the table and accusing them of murder. Yep. Uh, so I was really excited when this finally came in. And the production of it is that they knocked it out of the park. The, it's so good. The book itself is velvet lined so that all the tokens, which also have a velvet backing, they don't slide around so that you can carry it around the circle and you're not going to lose all of your information on there. And then I think probably the, the coolest thing about it is it's really three different games. Absolutely. Well, and more if you're willing to to print out some experimental things. Yeah, we haven't gotten that far <laughs> yet. Uh, but just the different scripts that they provide to you as the, you know, there's kind of a beginner script and then an intermediate one and then a just a very, very challenging, you've got to all understand Everything the mechanics. Everything is wild and well. crazy. 
Uh, but I love that aspect of it. And, you know, this was kind of a nightmare scenario as far as the crowdfunding went. Not their fault. I Absolutely mean, not. The project funded and everybody was really excited for it. Uh, it got great reviews and then the world went to hell. And shipping was impossible and production was impossible. And mm -hmm. so they stuck through it. And thank goodness they did because yes. this has become just our absolute favorite game to get together and start playing. Absolutely. Um, and this is one that I think really, you know, from our last video, we talked about the value that you get from from backing it initially. And, you know, it definitely goes for more at retail than yeah. we backed it for. Yeah, it is the initial backing price for this was $99. And now every time I've seen it at retail, I think it's going for about 150. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a small thing. I really enjoy the purple color. Everywhere else I've seen is it, it's brown. Oh yeah, they did a they re they redid the colors. And then I just <laughs> I like the purple so much better. It's very spooky. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. That so those are some of our favorite crowdfunding projects. Uh, have you backed any of those games? And if so, what did you think? What have been some of your favorite games that you've backed, uh, or what are some games that are worth seeking out? Are there any that we should check out? Yeah, let us know in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We're kind of in a groove now, so we're trying to release at least one video a week. So if you want to hear our opinions on some of our favorite board games or learn maybe more about board games that might interest you, uh, be sure to give us a like and a subscribe to Crunchy Cozy Games. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.